Hi, this is Jose Luis here and welcome to another video in this series, Advanced Development in Grasshopper. Um, we have done a lot of development in C Sharp scripting components and we're going to kind of wrap this up, but I would actually like to wrap it up with a fun and special video that we have prepared for you where we're going to learn a special technique on how can we write code inside C Sharp components, but instead of doing it inside the editor that comes out of the box with Grasshopper, we can do it in a more perhaps external sources of input. This is going to be different from the video we did previously where we were using script parasite, parasite script, I forget the name. Uh, it's going to be different in the ways that you're going to see. But for this video, I have a tiny surprise for you, which is that I would actually like to invite the author of the plugin that we're going to be using called Remo Sharp. And I would like to invite the author who is our friend from the Parametric Camp community, Arasto. Arasto, you're on the video right now. Hi, how are you doing? Hi, hi everyone. <laughs> hi, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi everyone, so my name is Arastu and uh, I'm from Iran. At the moment, I am a master's degree student at Keio University in Japan. And basically what I'm doing is, well, uh, like developing RemoSharp, which is like a tool for collaborative work remotely in real time. So I guess that's all. Yes. That is very awesome. And RemoSharp is the tool that we're going to be using today in this video, just for the sake of showing you all the perhaps like more advanced and more cool things that you can do uh, inside of the Grasshopper framework. Uh, I would like to say a few things. The Remo Sharp is open source, which is always a great thing because it's not only available and free to use for everyone, but it's also something that we can use to learn how to improve our coding skills. So big thumbs up for you, Aras2, for doing that. Another thing, this work that you're seeing in this video right now, is part of uh, Arastu's master's thesis at Keio University in Japan. So expect that whatever you see today is probably going to be much more advanced and much more developed if you're watching this video in sometime in the near future, because he's very actively working on this right now. And uh, last but not least, what do I want to say? Oh yeah, Arastu is right now in Japan as we are recording this very video that you're seeing right now, whereas I am in Boston. So we are 13 hours apart, which is very cool for the reasons that you will see very soon because of how we're going to be showing the possibilities of using Remo Sharp as a collaborative remote tool between different people in different parts of the world. All right, beautiful. So with that, what we're going to do is we're going to start with a few examples of the basics of how RemoSharp works, why it's interesting, and then we will move on to a few more advanced examples. So let me prepare a few things on my end. So first things first, let's start by how do we install RemoSharp in the first place? Well, the first thing that we need to do is we need to go to Food for Rhino. And if you don't have an account, then you get an account like you do for basically any plugin. And then what we're going to do is you're going to, you're going to look for Remo Sharp. You're going to see that uh, you have the plugin here by Arastu, who is that guy over there. And you just download the latest version and then you go to your Grasshopper files, a special folders, components. And then here you can open a, you can create a folder called Remo Sharp, for example, and you just dump the files here and, uh, and then you restart your Rhino. One thing that is important to note is that Remo Sharp is extremely designed to do real-time collaboration between different parties in different places in the world. So it uses a lot of um, network communication, global network communication, and specifically, it uses a lot of WebSocket technology. So you might be familiar with WebSocket from other videos in this channel. So in order to use WebSocket, Actually, RemoSharp depends on this other library by Beruz, also a friend from, from the community. Uh, this other plugin called Bengesh, which is the one that carries all the heavy load of doing the WebSocket communication. So it's very, very advisable that you also download and install Bengesh as part of, um, as a team, as a partner 
with RemoShap, okay? This might change in the future. If you're looking at this video in the future, maybe just look through the documentation if this is still necessary. But Bangesh is still a really cool plugin to have in any case, all right? So I suggest you install both. Um, I have, that's all you need for the basic features. For the more advanced features, as we will see later in this video, uh, there is some installation and some special configuration that needs to be done with Python. Again, as of the recording of this video. So the best place to know how to understand and how to install that is the main documentation, the playlist of tutorials that Arasto has put together. We will talk about this later on, but you see there's a video specifically on how to download and install everything. So we will go over that later on. And uh, once you have RemoSharp and Bangesh, you have a tab on your computer. I'm going to suggest, this is just a recommendation, Arasto. There's this thing that you can do where you can assign an icon to the tiny tab of the, um, of the plugins, so that instead of like a big R, that what you get is a tiny icon. So I, this is a, um, I don't know, feature request for the future. <laughs> so you have here the uh, RemoSharp. RemoSharp is actually getting quite complex again because of all the possibilities that it gives us for remote collaboration. But today we're going to start with the basics. The basics is that in the RemoSharp tab, there is the main RemoSharp component, which is a tool that converts text that's coming from anywhere into a C sharp component. I'm going to drop this here on my canvas. And uh, the way this works is that as soon as you plug in a Boolean toggle to the update input saying, I want to update this, then this magic C sharp component, if you will, shows up on the screen that is under the hood with some technology and code magic is actually connected to the main Remo sharp controller, if you will. All right. What this does is that it gives us a C-sharp script that we can customize. So for example, let's say right away, I'm going to say eh, this is going to be a double, Y is going to be a double, and I'm going to add another input, a C input that I'm also going to turn into a double, all right? And if I wanted, I could really double click and I could start writing something here to create a point from this or to add components together. But that's not the point of this video because the point of this video is how to do that programmatically from external sources. The way RemoSharp, um, let me plug in a few sliders here just for the sake of, um, just for the sake of uh, a few sliders here. <clears throat> All right. So we have a few sliders here. And then what I would like to do now is to somehow programmatically inject code in this C -sharp, C Sharp script component. I'm really clumsy with my tongue today in this C sharp script component that is code that is coming from some external source. The simplest external source that I can think of right now is just a panel. I'm going to write a panel here and I'm going to write as if I were inside of the component here. I'm going to write, I'm going to imagine that I want to add the result of the output. I want A to be equal to A plus Y plus C. If I did that, you can see how the component immediately takes uh, that value right away, okay? But I don't want to script inside of the component, so I'm going to remove the code. What I want is to inject that code externally. So I'm going to plug in that code here in a panel, and then I'm going to plug in the panel into the input that is called the script part. RemoSharp has different inputs for the different parts of the C-Sharp script component where you can inject that code. And you can see that as I in plug this in, all of a sudden, my component is now working and it's giving me an output that is the addition of these three numbers. So you can see 44, whatever. All right. This is happening because the RemoSharp controller is updating in real time the code that is inside of this script with this panel that I have here, with the code that is coming from the panel. So if, for example, I change this to a multiplication, you can see that this updates right away. And now the result is 84 point something something. And if I hit, I update this with a multiplication, then I also get like a 344 or whatever. All right. How cool is that? All right. So one thing, if 
If you don't really like the uh, development environment inside C Sharp script components or whatever, you can use panels to write code, simple code. All right. That's the first application. But external sources don't need to be constrained or bound to this simple panel input. Let me show you, sorry, let us show you another technique that can be really cool to bring in code. And instead of doing it from the panel, perhaps we can do it from an external file that is living inside of our system. Let's take a look at how we could do that. All right, so let's set the thing up. What we want to do is we want to pipe in to our Remo Sharp controller the source or the contents of an external file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dock Rhino right behind Grasshopper. I'm going to create a folder on my system. I'm going to call it Remo Sharp, for example. And then I am going to open an instance of uh, Visual Studio Code. In this instance, I'm going to drop my Remo Sharp folder so that I have like um, all the files that are in this folder available in Visual Studio Code. And then I'm going to right click on Remo Sharp, and I'm going to create a new file. This file, I'm going to call it, for example, sourcecode.txt, because it can be any type of file that can contain text. And as I do that, you can see that I get my file here. All right. And I'm going to start with something very simple. I'm going to say the output of this component needs to be hello, Remo Sharp, for example. Uh, sharp. All right. As simple as that. I'm going to save this. OK, and we have a file that contains code ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Grasshopper and I'm going to try to pipe the contents of this file that I have in my system into the script input here. So how am I going to do this? I'm going to disconnect this right now. This goes empty, so now it's not working. And then I'm going to add a read file component. This component. a file on your system in real time and it actually updates if there's any change in that file. So I'm going to plug it here so that we can see the contents of that file. And then what this component needs is uh, the path of the file that we're going to read. So the path in my case is this is my desktop. So I'm going to plug that here on the panel. So where is my panel here? So I'm going to double click here and say, this is Remo Sharp, and then I'm going to add that the file name is called sourcecode.txt. All right. As I plug that into my reader, you can see that my reader is already giving me the content of that file. And guess what? If I plug that into Remo Sharp, boom, then the content of the script is already reading from the external file that we're piping in. So if I go here to the output, you can see over Arasto's head, you can see the hello Remo Sharp message. All right. What's beautiful about this is that as now I can use my external editor as a real time editor for this grasshopper definition. Because if I say now, OK, the output should be a plus y plus c and a semicolon, as soon as I save this, Grasshopper picks up that change. It shows me here in the panel, but it also updates that in the C Sharp script component. All right, which is pretty cool. So I can also just do like this multiplication and this is a sum, whatever. It gets picked up, it gets updated. The result is, is updated. I can even be a little smarter and say, well, if I know I am writing C Sharp, C -sharp code, instead of sa saving the file as TXT, what I can do is I can save it with the extension CS, which stands for C Sharp. And by doing that, what happens is that the Visual Studio Code all of a sudden recognizes that this code is C Sharp code, and then it gives me highlights, but it also gives me smart suggestions, OK? Which means that I can have a sort of smarter editor outside in order to change my scripts here, OK? Which is pretty cool. Anyway, if you're going to really use the if you if what you're looking for is actually using an external editor for serious coding inside of um, a C sharp script component, perhaps the script parasite tool, it's a little better because it already incorporates 
um, the libraries and it gives you suggestions that are based on Rhino common suggestions, etc. This is not exactly the focus of Remo Sharp. Remo Sharp is more about collaboration, etc. Because what we're going to do in the next example is I would like to reinforce this idea that the text as a string of text can come from anywhere. It can come from a panel. It can come from a file that we have on our system that we are reading live. We're watching this file live, but it could come from any other place. Literally, it could come from anywhere in the world. So what I would actually like to do is to show an example of how now what we can do is we can connect the Remo Sharp controller to a network, a communication network using, for example, WebSocket clients and servers and have people from somewhere in the world, let's say, for example, Tokyo, right? And be the ones who actually write code on and their end and send it to my machine and get piped in to my, um, to my, uh, <clears throat> to my file definition here. All right. Give us a second to prepare that, that sample for you. Beautiful. In order to do this, what we're going to do is, first of all, using Bengesh, we're going to create a WebSocket client. So I'm going to go to Bengesh, I'm going to go to WebSocket, and I'm going to start a WebSocket client. I'm going to put here a toggle so that I'm, oh, sorry, more like a button in this case. I'm going to put a Boolean button to be able to reset the WebSocket server, the WebSocket client, whenever I want. And then the URL, what are we going to use for that one? Well, it turns out that uh, Arasto has gone through the effort of putting together a bunch of servers that we can use publicly and for free. And in order to get the address of those servers, you can go to communication tools in Remo Sharp and go to WebSocket server samples. As you do that, you can drop here a component the component will give you the address of a bunch of servers that Arasto is maintaining himself. This may or may not change in the future, so just make sure that whenever you watch this video, read through the documentation. And for example, because he has a, a lot of different servers, we are going to, we have agreed that we're going to be using server number two. All right. So what that means is that this component gives me the URL of a WebSocket component that is living in the cloud. So for example, Remo Sharp public server, and then we're going to plug this here into the URL. All right, beautiful. Um, I'm going to now connect a WebSocket reader. So I'm going to get a receiver. I'm going to connect it to the client so that I can see on my screen if there are any messages that are coming from the outside world. All right, so I'm going to actually maximize this. And I think at this point, Arasto, I am connected and I think things work on my end. Would you fancy sending some message from your end all the way from Japan? All the way from Japan and messages coming in. Oh, what? What just happened? This is magic. I love WebSockets. Oh, yeah. I love internet communication. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. So. As we mentioned before, the whole point of this example is that because we can plug into the Remoshar controller any text that is coming from anywhere, guess what? Arasto, would you mind writing a line of code on your end and sending it our way so that we can pipe it into Remoshar? Yeah, sure. So I'm going to send you a, a very simple line, a equals to x plus y plus c. All right. Here we go. That sounds great. Uh, we got it here. And then what I can do is I can plug in, I can delete all the other file reading stuff that I had before, and I can plug it into the script input. And oh, I got a hello world. Let me reset. I think you need to send the message again. Would you fancy? Yeah, of course. Just one second. Mm -hmm. For some reason, it yeah. got reset. This is also what happens with that. There you go. Now we got it on our end. And you can see that this is doing the addition. And if I double click, the code is inside. Yay, hooray, this is awesome. Nice, so Arasto, this de facto means that Arasto from Japan can code in real time in on his end and have his changes affect whatever code I am running in my end here. A bit more elaborate. 
yes, that we can see like some actual geometry happening in real time from Japan. Okay, so I'm gonna send you a list of points that Whoa! basically like 30 points. 30 okay. points vertical on the screen. Oh my god. Yes. Beautiful. Now, the cool thing about this is that you can change the X and Y values from your side while I'm changing how many points are we going to get. Oh, can we do that? I'm changing the values yes. here right now. I'm changing and the I'm X and change Y. This to 20. All right. Are we coding Four. together? Yes. From we are. what are we? Are we like 20,000 kilometers apart or something? right now you will at least 13 <laughs> hours so, yeah. we're 13 hours away from each other that is very very cool <laughs> beautiful <coughs> oh excuse me but this is not the end of the story so these are the basic examples that i wanted to do for in the context of this playlist advanced development in grasshopper showing you how we can do like hacky things with C Sharp script components by piping in code that is coming from anywhere, a panel, a file, or some remote friend from Japan. Okay? But this is not, this is only the tip of the iceberg in terms of RemoSharp. RemoSharp is actually designed for much more intense and much deeper real-time collaboration between different people in different parts of the world. Arasto, would you like to tell us a bit more about what is your vision or the big picture or what are the other things that Remo Sharp can do and perhaps we can do an example of that? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so Remo Sharp was kind of uh, my idea to create to create something like a platform for real-time remote collaboration. And uh, so basically the original idea was to like do scripting uh, remotely. So remote C sharp, you know, like hence remote sharp. And at the moment, it has grown to the system, uh, to a system that would allow everyone to not just programmers, but also non programmers to do collaborative work. And basically, what uh, the whole thing is, you're going to have like one big file, one big canvas, and everyone is going to be working at the same time on it. And the difference. The difference with this kind of work and with conventional work is that, well, first of all, you're going to get one file. So that means no file management, no versioning, no nothing. And everyone is going to be working on the same file. So that's one plus. Uh, the other thing that we can do with it is, well, first of all, not everyone has the same uh, level of skill. So one of the things that uh, this kind of system would encourage is, well, Hopefully, people with higher skills and people with lower skills can work together and start to elevate their skills together. Mm -hmm. Also, this creates an opportunity for human interaction, uh -huh. which is something that we're kind of deprived of in these times. We like human, so, we like human, human interaction. Yes, I do. I do. Yep, yeah, of course. <laughs> and yeah, that that kind of like the real time aspect of that collaboration. That kind of uh, create that creates that kind of uh, opportunity for that. So yeah, this is the final result of that. All right, awesome. Do you think we can try an example of that more advanced real time collaboration? Give us a second. We're going to set it up and we're going to show you what this is looking right now and what the outlook of how this may look in the future when you're watching this video uh, could be. Give us a second. So for instance, one example of cool things you can do with Remo Sharp. So we have this model of my head. Can you recognize me? Hmm? <laughs> we have this 3D scan of my head right now. And I have connected to a WebSocket server, <coughs> one of the Remo Sharp WebSocket servers with, um, with, uh, with Bangesh. So you can see that I can, for example, use viewport manipulation to change uh, the rotation and the orientation of my cameras. But something that I can do is I can open up the synchronization of a viewport to be controlled remotely from by using uh, Remo Shell, for example. So what I can do is I can connect a synchronization camera component to the WebSocket server that I have connected to. I'm going to put in here a toggle, so whether if we want to update or not, and I'm going to connect here the message. I'm going to turn this on, and right now, my grasshopper 
is receiving potential messages from some remote server to change the orientation of the screen. And I can see that Arasto has already sent a perspective message. However, it's absolutely is way off the screen, Arasto. I don't know if you can, I don't think you can see it, but we can see that Arasto mm -hmm. is right now remotely controlling my screen. But it went totally yes. out, it went totally <laughs> out of bounds. <laughs> this is not looking great. But you can see the tiny um, dot used to be me. <laughs> oh, really? So you didn't see where I can I find it? It is working, but it's totally so. The whole point of this example is that I can be controlling one viewport while Arasto is remotely controlling uh, the other viewport, which is which is very cool. So that's one thing that you can do. Another thing that you can do, Arasto, and I think we're going to try this as well, is actually um, having synchronous grasshopper definitions between different clients. Let us show you what that looks like. And here we go. Uh, what I have here on my right hand side is a grasshopper definition with Remo Sharp that is connecting to a server and is receiving a live stream of a, an image of what is happening actually on Arasto's side. So what you can see right behind me right now is Arasto's grasshopper definition in Japan that is being streamed real time to me. So I can see right now what he's working on. You can see those, you see those things moving. That's him changing them right now from Japan, all right? You can see those things moving. I can see what he's doing, what he's changing, and I could react to those changes. We could have a communication, we could work together. The setup of how this happened, it's a bit more complex than the basic setup. We have like a bunch of WebSocket servers and Python scripts, you <laughs> making this happen. But long story short, uh, right now I was able to establish a live communication with his definition and see in real time what he's doing. Um, Remo Sharp also has some features. So what I can do is I can actually make my grasshopper and his canvas both a little transparent and I can overlay them on top of each other so that I could see the comparison between my file and his file. I'm not going to do this in this video because I have a lot of monitors and I was getting problems to properly calibrate the overlay and it was looking very weird. But if you're only working on one monitor or if you have the time to put together that calibration, you could see that overlay. And actually, he has a lot of videos. He very recently put together a full playlist that you can follow where you can learn how to install Remo Sharp, all the dependencies, how to run the background Python servers to make this happen, how to properly calibrate and overlay, and then remote synchronizing many things like the cameras, like the scripts, but also this, uh, this overlay of components, all right? This is actually extremely, yes. extremely cool. You wanna say anything about the playlist? We're seeing the playlist right now on the screen. Yeah, too. sure. Uh, just before going to the playlist, I just wanted to uh, say, so this image that you're seeing right now that's being like broadcasted here, this is the whole idea. This is uh, something like that connected to the idea of working on one canvas and uh, each client is going to be working on one part of it. And that part is going to be determined on where in the client you're looking at the canvas. So you can interact with stuff, you can create stuff, you can connect wires, you can delete stuff, all in remote. And it's kind of completely interactive. And about the playlist, well, I have um, basically created a full tutorial on how to use Remote Shop, the current version, of course. So basically you can use a remote scripting. You can do this kind of like overlaying grasshopper together and uh, like interacting with components remotely. You can also like create sliders or panels or toggles that you can like change stuff. So like imagine just having one box and three people are gonna be changing X, Y, and Z in real time. So that's cool. That is very cool. <laughs> so a link to this playlist will be popping as a card on this video. There will be a link in the description of this video as well. You can probably expect that this list will change, will grow, will evolve over time as more features and more developments happen in the in the in the plugin and i just noticed we're not subscribed so if you fancy please subscribe to 
um, <laughs> Arastus channel. And if you want to learn more when new videos show up, you can click on hit on the notifications and then you get notified when new videos are published. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Oh, thanks to you and thanks to your contribution. Thanks for your contribution to the community. I hope many people will now have the possibility to do really cool stuff thanks to your work. Thank you very much. Of course. Um, thank you very much, Arastu, for being here. Uh, it was a pleasure to do this co-op video with you. Thanks to all of you who are watching this video and who may want to try to do cool things remotely with other people. And as usual, if you like what you saw in this video, maybe consider liking this video, subscribing to Parametric Camp, liking Arastu's videos, subscribing to his channel, etc. etc. All right. Arastu, what do we what can we expect in terms of future developments? Where do you think the library is heading, the plugin is heading? Well, right now what I'm trying to make uh, is, well, first of all, I'm trying to make it as intuitive as possible. So one of the things that we have to think, think about, so if we're doing remote work, I don't want to inc you know, like increase the, um, the tedious things, like extra tedious things to do. So I'm going to try making it as close as possible to working on an offline machine uh, with your own Grasshopper file. And uh, in addition to that, maybe something about performance or like internet latency and uh, stuff like that. All right. Very cool. Thank you very much, Arastu. Thank you very much, everyone. And see you on the next videos. Bye-bye. Say bye-bye. <laughs>